isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I'm thankful I keep the Lord on my mind. Amen. I keep me on my knees. Are you catching a theme this morning? Amen. Are you catching that? The Bible tells us that we need to speak with one mind and with one mouth, right? Is that what it said? Is that what we learned this morning? Amen. So I want to talk to you about a few things. I want you to listen to me very carefully because we've had some interesting things happen this past week. One, I just want to share this with you, that yesterday marked the 37th anniversary of the death of Elvis Presley. And I remember the day that Elvis died, my dad and I were going down Ward's Road right in front of where Hills Plaza is today. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Hills, was Hills Plaza, it's Burlington Factory now. That's about where we were. And when we were going down the road and come on the radio, that Elvis Presley was found dead. And my dad, I was sitting in the passenger seat of the car, and my dad turned and looked at me, and I thought he was going to lose his mind. <laughs> it was that devastating to my dad. My dad grew up on the Beatles and Elvis, and there wasn't nothing any better. I submit to you in some ways, when it comes to music, that it ain't much better than Elvis Presley. Amen. Elvis is about as good as it comes. But I thought my dad was going to lose his mind. He just, he, it just, it devastated. And then this past week, we saw up in Missouri, we see people looting and tearing up stuff and burning down their own neighborhood. They ain't acting in their right mind because nobody comes and tears up their own house. And the folks ain't thinking clear. And the whole reason that they're acting like that is because they're retaliating against a young man named Michael Brown who got shot and killed by a white police officer. And so there's folks upset with that, and so they retaliate. They ain't thinking clearly. They're not using their mind. So we're trying to get into this, to decide what happened to this young man, why did he get shot, and what's going on behind this, and trying to get into the mind of that young man and what happened. And a video surfaces show him robbing a convenience store, stealing $50 or so worth of cigars, pushing the store owner out of the way. The young man clearly won't think in, in his right mind. Clearly won't think in his right mind. And then, we all were devastated Monday when we heard the news of Robin Williams. Robin Williams brought us so much laugh. If you didn't get touched, by Robin Williams in some way, whether it's stand-up or whether it was movies, you just don't have a heart. He had a way to penetrate that heart and make us all laugh. He captured whatever character he worked in, but his specialty was making us laugh. He could turn a depressing situation into laughter and make us all laugh. And it's sad that the, one of the greatest comics of all time, his last feat was to make us cry. What was he thinking? That's what we've asked ourselves this week. Is what it, what's it, what was he thinking? How can you find yourself in that situation? Mental illness is something that I'm not prepared to tackle. I'm not prepared to get into the do's and the don'ts of mental illness, although God really burdened my heart with that this week. And I wish I had an answer for you. But what I can tell you this morning is the Word of God tells us what happens to those of us who think with one mind, with one voice, in Him. And that's where I want to take you today. Because a lot of us today in today's society, mental illness is something that is a serious disease. And let me tell you something. When Christ can heal mental illness, He can. Christ can heal cancer, He can. Christ can heal alcoholism, He can. Christ can set us free from the bondage of sin. Christ can. But the Bible says that our faith has made us whole. Our faith in what? Christ. What we need to be freed from more than anything is sin. Now, you and I may not deal with mental illness on a daily basis. However, it may surprise you just how many people in our congregation that deal with or know someone with mental illness. Mental illness is a serious problem. And it's not nothing that can be easily treated. It's no quick fix to it. But I'm not talking to those who have mental illness this morning. I'm talking to you who have a clear mind, who can think for yourself this morning. That's who I want to talk to this morning. And I want you to listen very clearly. You got your Bibles? Amen. 
I'm in the book of Mark. Which turn with me there, Mark 5. Excuse me a minute. Jake, my glasses in my coat pocket back here. Keep them for me, please. Thank you. Uh, just for those of y'all who don't know, I'm old folk in training. <laughs> and I need my glasses. <laughs> can, I get a, can I get a witness? <laughs> All right. Listen, do you got your Bible this morning? Who's got your Bible? Amen. Got it? Would you stand with me? We're going to read God's Word this morning. And listen, listen, if you believe the way I believe, I want you to lift him on up. Do you, you got it this morning? God, I believe this is your word. God, I believe this is your word. I believe you're my creator. I believe you're my creator. I believe you're my provider. I believe you're my provider. I believe you're my protector. I believe you're my protector. I believe you're my redeemer. I believe you're my redeemer. I believe you are my healer. I believe you're my healer. On you I stand. On you I stand. I lift you up. I lift you up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. He said it in. Please remain standing. He said in his word, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all, all men unto myself. We need to be lifting him up. We're going to lift him up this morning. Would you follow along with me? I'm looking in the book of Mark, chapter 5. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 20. Follow carefully, please. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the, Gardar the Gardarians, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had seen, he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he cried in the mountains and in the tombs, crying, cutting himself with stones. That sound familiar this week? But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. The unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea where they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And when they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. They began to pray for him to depart out of the, their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell him, tell them great things that the Lord hath done for thee, and had compassion for thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did more. Lord, we bow to you today. So grateful for that. Your word this morning, we're thankful that Lord, no matter what we're facing, we can come to you. Lord, we just ask you at this moment, at this time, that you would prick our heart. Help us, Lord, to understand what you have us to know. Help us, Lord, to receive your word. Help us to be wanting your word. Help us.
us to be longing for it. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. This, was, this really was a tough week um, in the entertainment world. And, but I want to share a few things with you that I want to point out that I think we can all learn from. One, I want you to notice that the very first thing to make sure our life and our mind gets clear and we get in the right track, notice what happened to the man that was possessed with the devil. What happened to him when he saw Jesus? He ran to him and he worshipped him. You and I today don't run to Jesus. We don't want to worship Jesus and therefore we try to fix the problems that we have on our own and that's not going to fix the problem. See, Jesus was ran to and worshipped. That's important because, listen, when I leave here tonight and I turn the light off in this building, darkness fills this building when the light leaves. And when the light leaves this temple, darkness fills it. That's why it's important to let your light shine so to glorify your Father in heaven. You keep the light burning here. And the Bible says that when we return to past sins, when we give up sin and we return back to it, the demons we fight are seven times worse than what they were originally. Amen. Why is that important? Because darkness and light can abide in the same place. Darkness and light cannot abide in the same place. With lights living here, darkness can't, can't be here. At, on, third, on Tuesday night Bible uh, prayer night, we come in here and we light a little candle. It illuminates the entire room. But if I come in here with a little bit of darkness in my hand and I let the darkness go, darkness is exposed by the light that is in the room. And darkness can't abide where light is. Why is that important? Because, see, it all starts with Jesus. Did you notice that the demon-possessed man saw Jesus and ran to him and worshipped him? That's an important thing today. That's an important thing because if you want to be delivered from alcoholism, if you want to be delivered from pornography, if you want to be delivered from drugs, or whatever other addiction that you may be having, you need to be running to Jesus, and then you need to be worshipping Jesus. It's got to start there. Amen. It's got to start there. If you can't start there, light can't dwell here. And when light can't dwell here, that means darkness rules. Now let me tell you what happens when the light comes in. When the light comes in, Jesus takes control. And now Jesus has authority over the demons that are in your body. And he says, depart. You don't belong there no more. It said that the demons had to yield to Christ. They recognized Him as being the Son of God. And now I want you to notice something else. There wasn't just one. The term legion means a thousand. But if you notice, there was two thousand swine that ran and drowned themselves. Man had two thousand demons in him. Some of us feel like we face demons every day. How many of you feel like you face a demon and so you deal with something every day? Let me tell you. For every one that you see, there's a hundred more you don't see. And you think you got it? You ain't got it. The only thing you got is just a little bit of time before the Lord calls you on. You better run to the cross. You better worship the Christ because the game will be over soon. I don't know what Robin Williams was thinking when he, when he kissed his wife goodnight and took his own life. What a tragic thing that had to be. That, how lonely does an individual got to get to get to that place in their life? But I'm telling you this morning, when you come to the cross and you're thinking the way Jesus wants you to think, God's going to take control of you. And you, you that are fighting with alcoholism or pornography or drug addiction or whatever, gambling or whatever the thing is, when you come to the cross and you start worshiping God, you'll be clothed and you'll be in your right mind. Amen. Thinking the way He wants you to think. <coughs> Mental illness is a topic that's a little bit tougher for me to deal with this morning because I don't know anything about mental illness. But when a Christian walks this aisle and he comes down here and gives his heart to Christ, Christ doesn't heal them of cancer. Christ doesn't heal the alcoholic from alcoholism when he saves them. 
it, the individual has got to give that to Christ and let God work that out in him. Amen. God doesn't just start you with a clean slate, although we're supposed to do our very best to walk in the newness of life. But just like Christ doesn't always heal a Christian who has cancer, He's not going to always heal a Christian who has mental illness. And I can't answer that this morning. But I'm talking to you this morning who have a clear mind. You have a decision to make in your life of how you want to serve God. And when you make the decisions to come to Christ and worship Him, God is going to demand that you let your light shine. And when you let your light shine, Christ is going to command the dark demons to leave you alone. Amen. And then when you start coming, getting really on fire for Christ, and you come in and you want to serve in some capacity, and you say, I'm ready to serve Christ, I'm ready to do what Christ wants me to do, and now I'm so focused on heaven that I'm no earthly good. It's all about going to heaven. It's all about being Jesus. And I don't really care about you. And I don't care about what your needs are. I'm just going to come in and serve God. Well, that's not what God tells us to do. God says, look, come to me. I'll save you. But now you need to go. See, the, the demon-possessed man wanted to go with Jesus. You and I, when we come to know Christ, we want to go home with Jesus, right? God says, you can't come yet. There come a time that you're ready to go. This world ain't at home. There's a better time coming. He's done built a mansion. We're heading there one day. But until then, he's telling you and I the same thing he told the demon-possessed man. No, you can't come with me now. You will at some point, but what you need to do now is go. Go to your family, he said. Go tell them the great things the Lord has done. If he's delivered you from sin, tell it. When you go to work, be a new person. When, if you're a husband who's going to accept Christ, be the godly man you're supposed to be. If you're a wife who's accepted Christ, be the godly wife that God expects you to be. If you're a child of God here, Sunday, you need to be a child of God at work on Monday. Right. If you're a child of God here on Sunday, you need to be a child of God on Saturday night. Amen. You need to let your light shine so it may glorify your Father in heaven. Not preaching. Just saying. This morning, are you letting your light shine? How about your way of thinking? Do you think the way that God wants you to think all the time? Or do you turn it off every now and then? Do you, do you put on the world sometime? Or are you carrying God with you everywhere you go? See, today, you had an opportunity to come to church. And I'm so glad that you did. I'm thankful that you're here this morning. But this won't get you to heaven. Deciding to come here ain't going to get you to heaven. Deciding to follow Him when you leave here is what gets you into heaven. Amen. Deciding to follow Him, not come here to Him. Coming here is half the battle. Now you've got to follow. See, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They know me. And they follow me. And another one, they will not follow. Right. So, it's not no good just to come in and know who Jesus is when you see him. It's not no good to just come in and lift him up. You honor me with your lips. But your heart is far from it, he says. You need to be following him. Letting your light shine. Walking with a new mind. How are you going to know what that new mind and that one voice is supposed to be? You've got to be in His Word. Yeah. You've got to be on your knees. You keep the Lord on your mind and you on your knees, you're going to be walking in the will of the Lord. Amen. This morning, mental illness is a terrible thing. I wish I had an answer. As a pastor, I struggled all week with how to present this this week. But what I can tell you beyond a shadow of doubt is this morning, some of us have some mental issues that we need to work out that problem is the man and the woman in the mirror. It's not in our mind. It's the person in the mirror who we fight. This morning you have an opportunity to say, Lord, I yield my desires to your desires and I want you to let my mind think the way you want me to think. I need my speech to be what you need me to be. I need to be doing the things that you need me to be doing. I, I love you, Lord. I'm thankful but that you died for me, but I'm ready to walk in the newness of life with one mind, with one voice, glorifying the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.